ClickUp for getting things done, or GTD for short. Can we make that work? Short answer, yes, we certainly can. For the long answer, watch the video and we'll find out together. Before we get started though, my name is Lucas. Thank you for tuning into this video. And if you're looking for more videos on personal productivity and getting things done specifically, make sure you subscribe because I've got a lot more videos planned. So let's take a look at ClickUp, which is an interesting software because it is one of those that is actually mainly produced for collaborative productivity, a collaborative workspace, so to speak. I remember seeing a tagline uh, where they also claimed this is the app that can replace all other apps, which is a very bold statement to make. But as I uh, use it, I was really pleasantly surprised because usually apps that are aimed at collaborative workspaces and really a very broad level type of software, so to speak, uh, aren't very good at niche applications. And GTD, I would argue, is one of those niche applications because unfortunately it's certainly not the ultimate uh, most popular productivity method out there though i would certainly like to see that changed uh, uh, but regardless i found it to work very well for getting things done so let's just dive right in and see why and how you can make it work for you if you use this tool as well we're going to skip some of it because like i said a lot of it, this is aimed at collaborative workspaces and also uh, not everything is built for GTD. So we're just gonna zoom in on the portions that I feel really make a good GTD system. So in the homepage, for example, you can see that this is very empty uh, for reasons I will explain in a bit, but the gist of it being the same, not necessarily built for GTD, even though that might seem surprising at first sight because some of this, especially this one here, seems to be like this is the next action step, right? Uh, you'll find that I actually have a reminder sitting here, which you can create from any part of the software. And this is where I really feel it deserves kudos. They really thought about the user experience. It's easy to capture new thoughts, but also set up new reminders for your tickler file. So this is actually what this is. This is my tickler file with reminders. It has the reminder symbol. And from here, and this is something you can do anywhere, you can set up such a reminder. Uh, and this is where you'll find an overview of those if you would want to. But obviously the idea with the reminders is you don't have to think about it. It will come to you when the time is there. Um, and then uh, you see on the left side, uh, we're currently on the home page, right? And we have notifications. Well, those are more like built in uh, notifications. If I don't know, a certain task has become a next action, which is possible through automation as well, which we'll take a look at, or if a task has been assigned to you by someone else, but probably you won't look at this too many times is what I'm guessing, but it's there and it's good to have. Goals is something you will also want to define as a GTD -er, and this is a built-in feature of ClickUp. So we didn't have to set up a separate list for this. And I like what they've done here with the goals view. So you can uh, set it up in several ways. And in this example, I have a goal of watching 10 movies uh, and I can measure the progress towards that goal by really uh, making that into a numeric value here. As you can see, the target is 10. I'm currently on one. Therefore, my progress is 20%. However, if I add a unit, you know, and I change it to uh, change it to two, and I mark it as an increase, then the goal progress is now 20% because two out of 10 is 20%. So I think that's nicely done. It's very neat. And you can also see the progress towards the goal here, which is cool to have. Now we can get to in, uh, into some of the real GTD stuff though, uh, by going to uh, spaces, which have uh, lists and folders. Let's uh, take a step back first to see what are the taxonomies that ClickUp actually uses. So what you're seeing here is that I've expanded the spaces menu and the space is basically similar to what Trello can do or Asana and tools like that. Uh, they can be collections of lists and items related to a particular work area. And there you can really see that this is primarily made for enterprises or businesses that may have, you know, separate teams with specific work related to those teams and so forth and so on. Uh, what I've done here is just manage it all within one space. I don't think you'll need more than one for personal productivity, though you certainly can. In this example, I've just made one GTD space. 
Within that space, you can create lists, which is perfect because that's what GTD is all about, right? Uh, and those lists can have specific tasks or other types of items live within them. You can also organize these lists within folders, which is handy if you have multiple projects, for example. You can just minimize and expand the projects folder. And you can organize this in any way you see fit, honestly, right? If you want to have like a ground level folder, you know, have the horizons of focus separated in folders, you can certainly do that. For illustration purposes, I've kept it pretty simple here. And we're going to go through these lists uh, and, uh, and see what we uh, did with it. So important, as always, is the inbox, right? We want to be able to capture items easily. So that is why there's just a separate inbox uh, list that we've created. There is no... Uh, inbox by default to dump items into but this is certainly something that works nicely you can easily create a new task that doesn't mean the inbox item has to become a task right but uh, uh, this is just an initial place to park it uh, if you want to process it into a next action for example that is something you can do with tags uh, and you can do so by uh, going to the uh, task at hand and then proceeding to add the tags here by clicking edit tags and you can see that you can you know create these separate contexts uh, and color code them which is handy because that's what i do always you know i color my context uh, uh, blue when i can uh, the next action tag uh, shows an item that's really an action you can perform uh, now within a certain context uh, pink tags i use concerning agenda items or waiting for items uh, especially if I'm waiting for a specific person, then there's a separate waiting for tag as well. We'll look at some applications for that in just a moment. So let's pretend that we just got an item here that we can perform from home. And let's imagine it will take us uh, like 30 minutes. This is something we can do by navigating to the right and moving to the time estimate uh, menu. And by typing 30, you can already see I found the option here to uh, give it 30 minutes of estimated time required. I save it. And the last thing we want to do is actually move the task because we're still sitting in this particular inbox list. So what we can do is uh, select it and drag it into a project, or in this case, the standalone items list that it's related to. We'll be prompted with a uh, item here to indicate that these have different statuses. This is something we can ignore in this particular setup though. Uh, so uh, we can just mark this as to do, and then we're good. The inbox is empty and we've moved it into the standalone items list, right? And the same is true for the project list, which you know is a collection of actions and other items in order to complete this, uh, this multi-step outcome. But as you can see here, this is, spread out over different contexts and different uh, action types. Uh, not all of these are next actions. So how can we actually get a next actions view? This is what we can do with a different taxonomy type called dashboards. And essentially these are like smart lists. So uh, what you can do is what I've done here to set up a next action list. And it works really well because as you can see, uh, it only shows items with the next tag. And uh, uh, you can also see the different contexts, but also the uh, area of focus or project those items are related to here. And if we want to see next actions that we can only perform from home, for example, all we have to do is create an additional filter where we also indicate we're looking for items that have the home tag. So next and home equals next actions we can perform from home. So that is a really great way to organize your next actions and really operate from there. It's fantastic. It's really all you look you would want from a system and you can filter for so much more, right? You can also filter for uh, the uh, time estimated. So if you want to have uh, items uh, only that you know can take up to 30 minutes, you can do that because that's a filter we've set up. Uh, sorry, that's a, uh, an item we've set up and we can filter for it. So really well done there. For waiting for, we're using a similar approach, right? We already showed the several tags an item can have, including waiting for and specific people we might be waiting for. So if we're looking for anything we're waiting for from Tom, all we have to do, in this case, it's redundant because we just have one item for demonstration purposes, but we would add both the waiting for tag as a condition, as well as the person we're waiting on 
uh, with something and then we would only see those items appear so that is uh, really fantastic and we can also favorite these items uh, which i've done here for quick access so i have my inbox list my next actions list and my waiting for a list those are really the most important ones you know for being actionable so to speak but it certainly doesn't stop there you may have noticed some interesting things uh, appear such as this symbol here uh, and this is where uh, I truly got excited about ClickUp for GTD because if we go back to the project view, we have a project here, you know, we're a movie geek. That's what we already saw in this uh, goal that we had, you know, at watch 10 movies. Well, uh, let's say I bought a new TV and I want to uh, install it so I can watch those movies. Uh, well, uh, in this uh, scenario, I've already purchased it, but I have to still pick it up. So my very next action is to pick it up, which is an errand. Uh, and that is why it's a next action. Uh, I can also move my old TV to the garage. Maybe I want to sell it later, but I just want to store it there for now. These are items I can perform simultaneously. They don't depend on each other. However, uh, what is dependent uh on uh another thing to happen first is unpacking the tv that we bought we first have to pick it up and so uh what is really cool is we can set up these dependencies here to really create sequential projects and uh that way uh, an item will not become a next action until the uh, previous action is completed really powerful stuff and through automations, which you can create here as well, which I've done, uh, you can uh, make it so that, as I will show you here, when a task is unblocked, in other words, when the item it depended on is completed, uh, the tags will change. And in this case, the next tag will be added to that item, thereby automatically showing up in your next actions view once you've completed the prior action. With the context already predefined, there's nothing else we need to do. So this is a really wonderful, powerful way to manage your projects without having to go into the projects manually to, to repeatedly, I don't know, add these tags for you, right? Fantastic. Uh, and you can also see that even waiting for items can be dependencies, right? Let's say after I unpack my TV, I'm waiting for my friend Tom to arrive and help me install the cables because uh, I'm not good at that and he is uh, and he's also a uh, movie fan like myself so here's where we can go into the agendas list you know with my talking points well what if I see Tom I want to talk about this horror movie I saw Cloverfield it's actually a pretty good movie uh, by the way but I can talk about it with him when I see him and thereby uh, uh, I can access my agendas list but I can also use this for meetings of course and make this very sophisticated but uh, really really powerful way to use GTD with ClickUp with automations uh, I really love it I gotta say well done and to conclude the overview we can quickly go over some more simple areas of GTD which mostly, uh, mostly come down to actually defining some of these areas like someday maybe is like a deferred inbox, right? Uh, you just park items in there that you might want to take up at a later time, like make my own movie, for example. Doesn't require context per se at this point in time. It just sits there. I need to re revisit it regularly and think about is this actionable and relevant to my life now? But until then, it can really just operate as its own list. Although you can certainly create separate someday maybe lists by parking them inside a folder, maybe grouping them by category or area of operation or focus, etc. Right? So feel free to make this your own. And the same counts for your vision and your purpose, which in this case, I've actually used the doc functionality for, which you can add as a separate view. And uh, you can use the doc view here because in this case, this is more something that you want to really define, right? Uh, so using a task list for that is not really elegant. So you can have a really uh, thorough, uh, what you see is what you get text editor. And I can start to see why ClickUp is claiming this is the one app to replace all apps because this is certainly uh, well thought out and easy to switch between. And this is actually where we can also move into the reference portion of GTD. It's very difficult for software to really be holistic, but I think ClickUp just about pulls it off. 
uh, from what I've been trying to do here, you know, uh, an example reference item you might want to have is a copy of your passport. You know, you can attach files to these docs uh, and apply formatting to the text so you can have your information easily available. I found it to be very impressive. You can search for names. So if you're searching for your passport, you can do that too. I haven't found a way to actually apply tags to these items, which I found a bit of a letdown because that is something to really up your reference game, right? To categorize these items. But I suppose there are other ways around that because you can maybe create separate lists for that and then have these documents live in those lists, which is what you can see here, right? The my vision document is part of the vision list, which you've created. So I suppose that's the way to do it. Beyond that though, a really, really great piece of software. And this is just a free version for personal use. I was thoroughly impressed and surprised with how well this turned out to work for GCD. So all I can say is well done to the team at ClickUp. And uh, I recommend you give this one a try. If you're looking for a system that can be holistic, uh, that provides automation. And let me assure you, I've just scratched the surface here of what's possible with automation. There's so much more to cover, but for simplicity and time's sake, I didn't in this particular video. But give it a try, play around with it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And that actually also concludes this series, which I've been running. So if you haven't been watching all of my videos yet, I've reviewed a lot of GTD tools or potential tools for GTD over the past months on my channel. Every week I went into a specific piece of software that works for Windows because that's the operating system I'm still confined to at this point and see, you know, how can we make it work? Some of them were famous pieces of software like OneNote and Todoist, while others were less famous, but I think deserved a shout out. What's coming up next is a overall review of all these tools that I've reviewed and compare them and see, in my opinion, which one is the best for GTD. And this one, ClickUp, I think it's certainly a fair contender for that prize. So that's gonna take a while. I'm gonna uh, take some time to process all that information. I also have some personal events coming up, so I might not upload as much as I have over the past months, but rest assured that I'm focused on delivering quality content on this channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do because there's more coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support you've given and see you in the next video.